contacts with the family and friends. Here's how we do it. No boring, sleepy strings. No elevator music. No blast of rock. Just hour after hour of songs to sing along with. On the Light FM, 103 WLTE. You say you have a lot of fun looking at Big Louie, messing around with Jim, Jay, John, and Jackie. I love it! And with all the high dives, the low blows, and the cut-ups in between, it's too good to be true. It's true. And now you want to see what's brewing, because there's more stars. That's incredible. And more fun. Who cares? On the Hollywood Squares. Hollywood Squares. Weekdays on Channel 4. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's finally here, the day we've all been looking forward to or dreading, the day the snowflakes come and make us take a crash course in winter driving. WCCO Television presents Don Shelby, Pat Miles, and Bud Craylin. This is the 5 p.m. report. Afternoon. Calendar says winter doesn't officially begin until next month, but today it is giving us at least a sneak preview. Just a little one. We've asked Bud Craylin to sit down a little bit early this afternoon and tell us the latest on this snowfall. It's really been kind of a pleasant time. Yeah, I'm sorry. So a little slush on highways, and maybe it's a little slow at the rush hour traffic, reduced visibility, and the strong winds and some blowing snow. Some light snow continues over east central Minnesota into west central Wisconsin. It's moving out to the north at about 20 miles an hour. Skies will be clearing later tonight, about after 9 o'clock, down to around 20 overnight. So there may be some slippery spots in the morning, but tomorrow up to 36 and sunny. All right, thank you, Bud. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, regaining the winter driving technique can become a big chore. The Minneapolis Star and Tribune hit the nail on the head earlier this week with this editorial cartoon on what happens to Twin Cities traffic when the first snowflake of the season hits the road. That's exactly what's happening out on the highways this rush hour, but as Trish Van Pilsen is standing by live to explain, the drivers negotiating those slippery roads aren't laughing at least not yet. Trish? Hi, Pat. As that cartoon indicates, the first day of winter driving is kind of a running joke around here. But that situation became a little more serious about 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's when the roads became kind of rough. Now, as you can see behind me, traffic is already moving very slowly, and it's expected to get even worse. The State Patrol already reports at least 20 accidents scattered all over the metro area. Some of them have had injuries. Many of them are weather-related. Driving conditions really aren't that bad. Visibility is getting worse, but the roads really aren't that slippery yet. There's just something about driving in the first snow that does something to Minnesota drivers. People have to learn how to drive all over again, learn to reduce their speeds and increase their following distances, maintain safe traffic on the freeways. Our people drive defensively and uh, use uh, caution all the time, but they, they're more aware of the how slippery it becomes. So they're a little more careful. There is a lot of water on the roads right now, and things could get worse if it freezes and gets slipperier. The Weather Center tells me it probably won't freeze until early morning. Hopefully by then the snow will have stopped, the roads will have dried somewhat. But the recommendation is at this point, be prepared to be very careful, buckle up, and get through this. And remember, this only comes once a year, and I think that's lucky because I'm about to blow away here. <laughs> It, it looks like it, Trish. The wind has really picked up outside. Yeah, the gusts are pretty strong. All right. Well, you get inside. Thank you. Okay. A Northwest airplane headed for the Twin Cities had to make an emergency landing this morning. Flight 223 out of Billings, Montana, touched down in Bismarck, North Dakota, just shortly before noon after a stairway on the 727 jet apparently lowered in flight. The landing was without incident, and the 44 passengers were transferred to another flight for the trip to the Twin Cities. The dispute continues this afternoon near Detroit over whether a Northwest jetliner was set up incorrectly for takeoff before it crashed last August. The National Transportation Safety Board is wrapping up its second day of hearings on the accident that killed 156 people. Much of the investigator's evidence suggests the jet tried to take off with wing flaps and slats retracted, not properly extended. An engineer described the cockpit controls as they were recovered from the wreckage. As the pedestal, uh, they originally saw it, the flap slat handle was in the uh, fully retracted position. Northwest reportedly has evidence challenging the belief that its pilots forgot the flaps, but the 
chair of the hearing, says the evidence may not be available this week. The Mississippi barges are back on track near the St. Anthony Locks this afternoon. 17 of them have been stranded since last week when an NSP electric plant collapsed. Engineers tried to shore up the plant's foundation and drain the water from the area, but the building is a total loss, and they've diverted the water back into the pool to let the barges pass. The first one steamed away about 10 this morning. A fire in St. Paul this afternoon has claimed the life of an 85-year-old woman. Firefighters called to the scene on Manitoba were not able to knock down the flames soon enough to save the victim who was trapped upstairs. She died at the scene. Authorities believe the fire may have been started by the woman's three-year-old great-great-grandson who was reportedly playing with a lighter. The Twin Cities may be hit with a, a federal ban on certain kinds of construction soon. That is, if it doesn't soon find a way to comply with government guidelines against air pollution. Now, that threat was issued in Washington today by an official with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Skip Losher has details now from our Washington Newsroom. Skip. Pat, according to the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, there are 27 locations in the Twin Cities area where carbon monoxide levels still exceed government standards. Most of the carbon monoxide problem stems from auto emissions, and it's increased when heavy, cold winter air keeps the pollution from rising into the atmosphere and dissipating. If Minnesota doesn't implement a plan to lessen carbon monoxide by at least 3% a year, the EPA may ban construction of new facilities, which will make the problem worse. If that city is not yet meeting the standard, we're going to ban major new emitting sources. That's what the construction ban is all about. Unless the law is changed, Thomas says he will have to do that, but he hopes to hold off other sanctions. I'm saying I'll withhold the other sanctions, and the other sanctions are the highway funding sanctions, the sewer, federal sewer grant cutoff sanctions, federal air grant cutoff sanctions, if you're making reasonable progress. State officials fear the construction ban could halt such projects as the Bloomington Mega Mall, which could increase traffic and hence pollution in the area around Cedar and 494. The only long-term solution MPCA officials can see is to implement a mandatory inspection and maintenance program for all cars and trucks registered in the seven-county metropolitan area. They think that would lower carbon monoxide emissions far enough so that Minnesota can finally meet and then stay within the federal air quality standards. But such a program would need the approval of the state legislature and the governor, and getting that approval could be difficult. Pat? All right, thank you, Skip. Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger has spent his last official day on the job. President Reagan and other top brass from the military joined in a one-hour trip so to the Pentagon to today to say goodbye to the president's old friend and political confidant. Weinberger received Distinguished Service Awards from the Army, Navy, and Air Force. He'll actually stay on the job until National Security Advisor Frank Carlucci is confirmed to replace him at the Defense Department. Stay with us now as the Tuesday Five continues. We'll tell you about some new findings on those calcium tablets. And we'll also explore the reasons why children prefer certain toys and ones which are best for the youngsters. Those stories coming up. Some of us find it hard to get a good night's sleep because of aches, pains, stress. We need relief, ideally something natural. For troubled sleepers around the world, the answer is wool rest. A layer of pure wool fleece, shaggy fibers so resilient they cushion and comfort sensitive joints and muscles. Wool rest helps you sleep longer, deeper, to wake more refreshed. Why spend another sleepless night when there's a natural solution? Exclusively at Dayton's. We're at a famous restaurant outside Chicago where we've secretly replaced the coffee with sand and ground up clamshells. Let's see what happens. Relax, Monsieur Andre. This is all to prove a point about how well the Regina Electric Room cleans beautiful bare floors. Zip, zip, no more clamshells. Now, if the Regina Electric Room can do such a good job here, imagine what it can do in your home. Just ask Monsieur Andre. This Christmas, you'll experience the hoopla and the hassles chasing after those so-called goodbyes. But you can still be left in the dark. Where can you find value without the hassle? Our own hardware. We've got loads of great gifts. Like this cordless Makita 3 8 inch variable speed reversing drill with built-in level, just $64.99. Or a Hoover cordless hand vacuum. Easily picks up wet or dry spills and only costs $29.99. So come in from the dark and see what you've been missing at participating our own and how-to stores. Thank you. 
To keep your shredded cheese fresh, you can stick to the old ways. Or you can try the new zip pack resealable bag from Sargento. We've all seen the ads lately promoting calcium tablets and their help in strengthening bones and preventing against the disease osteoporosis. But a new study on how well those tablets dissolve in our systems has now been completed. And our health and science reporter, Tony Vigneri, is here to explain. The news is not too encouraging, huh? Not too encouraging. Don and Pat, if you recall, in September, we told you about an East Coast study which detailed how fast and, in some cases, how slow calcium tablets dissolve in our bodies. The studies found that a number of brands of calcium supplements are not properly breaking down in our stomach. Now a follow-up study on more brands has found the same thing. The study by the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy examined 40 calcium supplements. Government standards say to be effective, the calcium should properly dissolve in the stomach within 30 minutes. Out of the 40 brands tested, 25 failed the test. Researchers say if it's not dissolving, it's not doing you any good. As more is known about the link between calcium and osteoporosis, more women are taking calcium supplements. Teresa Winter is very concerned about it. So because of the family history, it was suggested to me that I take calcium, and then also, um, as long as I was nursing, they said I should increase the amount that I take. That's and Teresa says news that some calcium supplements may not be doing their job is very upsetting. I think you just um, trust what's on the shelves in the drugstore and you just you know i've never thought about it until i saw that it made me start thinking about other supplements that i take also that are they dissolving are they doing my body any good these are the supplements researchers say are properly dissolving oscal oyster shell calcium caltrate biocal and kmart hp and researchers say to find out if your calcium tablets are working Put one in a glass of vinegar and stir it vigorously every two to three minutes for a half hour. It should start to break up. If it doesn't, you may want to switch brands. Researchers also told us manufacturers are starting to reformulate their products so they will properly dissolve. But not everyone agrees with the home vinegar test. A spokesperson for a local drugstore chain told me today it's not as simple as throwing the tablets in a glass of water. He says some of the tablets are coated so that throws off the vinegar test. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tony. University of Minnesota and Hendrix Piano Stores have struck up an historic and harmonious deal. Hendrix announced today it is donating more than 50 upright and grand pianos to the School of Music. They will replace them with the new ones each year for the next 15 years. The first pianos were delivered to Ferguson Hall today. They will replace old and overused pianos on which the music students have been playing. Christmas lights are up downtown, it's snowing, and we're getting in the mood for Santa Claus. But many of us still have no idea what toys to buy our kids this year. It's not an easy decision. So Pat Miles has been researching the subject for us, and the results of which she'll have tonight on her 10 p.m. report, an expanded uh, story. The, the story we did, Don, was really not uh, a consumer piece, where you go out and you talk about which toys are safe and uh, which toys cost the most. But really what we wanted to do was try and find out which toys might be the best toys to buy for a child? Uh, we focused primarily on the uh, toddler age group. Mm -hmm. And what we found was really interesting. The first thing we found out is that you're not going to ever force a child to play with a toy that he, he or she is not interested in. But second of, second of all, the toys that were the most interesting for the kids were the traditional toys, believe it or not, the building blocks, the toys where they could accomplish something. Those toys made them feel the best. So the the uh the feeling a parent might have to go out and buy something that looks commercially hip or or uh, uh, trendy to to perhaps avoid those pitfalls well, and look for things that the kids uh, don't can you find yourself do? walking into the toy stores i mean i do and i'm attracted to the toys as an adult that i think are interesting all the beeps and the ones that talk and uh, do things but but those toys really and and this is not to take away from from those terrific toys and they are but what's interesting is to watch a kid use his own creativity with a toy i mean to me it seems like that is what really and psychologists bear this out who studied this subject that's what really makes them develop their minds especially so, in that preschool age so it is play but constructive play that you're mm -hmm, looking for mm -hmm. as well some interesting things you know there are all kinds of discovery toys now it, it's they call it the tupperware party of the 80s where these are toys that are educational but also toys where parents can interact with their children all right look forward to the feast tonight 
Stay with us as the Tuesday Five continues. We're going to check on flooding problems in the south, earthquakes in the north, and we're going to bring Bud back to find out whether the chance of more snow is staying in the weather forecast. Hmm. <laughs> when you think of one name that means everything in coffee makers. What's the one that comes to everyone's mind? <laughs> Mr. Coffee. Because Mr. Coffee's been America's best-selling brand for over 12 years. You might select Mr. Coffee under the cabinet. Or Mr. Coffee Jr. Or the new International Design Series, the newest member of the Mr. Coffee family. Style. Quality. Dependability. And of course, all this from Mr. Coffee. The two came from out of the West. One was big and lean. The top sirloin from Cattle Company. The other was, was tasteful. Italian, shrimp scampi, and now they're coming together to form one legendary dinner with a baked potato and a fresh garden salad, all for just $8.95. Top sirloin and shrimp scampi, our Italian Western combination, only at Cattle Company. Come on and give that glove a hand. New totes. Come on and give that glove a hand. Now the entire family can enjoy the stylish warmth and fit of totes gloves. The hands-down favorite in winter wear. Choose from a rainbow of colors and lined fabrics like poplin, leather, chintz, canvas, and soft line. And rain rolls right off these versatile crowd pleasers. For sports, dress, or everyday wear, say goodbye, cold, wet hands. Hello, totes. Give that glove a hand. Totes, a glove this good deserves a hand. Citrus Hill Select's big new 96-ounce jug. It sure got a whole lot to love. Citrus Hill Select gets its freshness from the heart and puts it in a jug, but that's only where we start. It's restealable and shakeable and doesn't make a mess. Your family's gonna love it cause it helps the juice stay fresh. Shake, twist, twist, kill Our big 96-ounce jug fresh so much more than more. strong earthquake struck off the south central coast of alaska this morning measuring 6.9 on the richter scale the jolt could be felt nearly 300 miles away up in anchorage though no major damage or injuries occurred and tidal wave warnings were canceled later in the day meanwhile another earthquake rocked nicaragua last night sending thousands of residents from their homes in managua that quake registered 6.1 and was felt all across the nation at least three people were injured in Nicaragua. And also, uh, Bud, wanted to brief you on this. We've got some people uh, in the South uh, reeling from all of those tornadoes, uh, mm. states of emergency declared by Edwin Edwards, the governor of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Well, the rain has continued over the southeastern states. One of the heavier amounts today that I noticed on our weather summary was four inches of rain at Tallahassee. Wow. So that rain has moved over into uh, Florida and all up the eastern seaboard. Well, we really started out with rain today. We didn't did. We? It was kind of a matter of degrees, I guess. It was 37 this morning in the Twin Cities when we had that light rain. We've been sliding toward the freezing mark all day. We're at 33 now. And the rain turned over to light snow uh, early this afternoon. There is some slush buildup on some of the highways. Kind of a soft, snowflakey look to the city skyline. Well, we've just been talking about some of the heavier rainfalls over the southeastern states, and I thought I would mention a few more. We've uh, talked about Tallahassee at four inches of rain, but Augusta, Georgia had nearly two and a half. Columbia, South Carolina, an inch of rain, and Panama City, Florida, an inch of rain. You know, over the southeastern states, they were so dry for so long, and now it just seems like it's hard to get it ended and get back to the sunshine that Florida would probably like to have. Uh, many areas of southern Minnesota with a half inch of precipitation. We continue to have light snow in east central Minnesota and about as far to the east as Eau Claire and precipitation is moving to the north as it has been all day to the north at 20 miles an hour. Skies, we're forecasting clearing later tonight and temperatures dropping in into the 20s. There's been rain in California, Shelter Cove, California. Some of the rain on the coasts, I guess, Shelter Cove, California with an inch of rain. Precipitation through Colorado and thunderstorms in northern Florida and all up. That's a cold front that is moving on to the eastern seaboard. And as the cold front uh, compresses some of the warmer temperatures along the eastern part of the country, the storms are building from Nevada into Colorado, that monarch ski area of Colorado with 13 inches of snow. So they'll be going down the slopes and the thunderstorms over the southeastern states. 
We've talked about some really warm temperatures just right along the seaboard in Philadelphia this afternoon. Temperature was 72 degrees just ahead of the front, kind of on the frontal line in the higher elevations, Bluefield, West Virginia, rain in 55, and Fort Myers, Florida was the hot spot today at 85. Longview, Texas, they had rain the last couple of days, but they were sunny today, 64. Aspen, Colorado, 30 and snow, and Yellowstone Park, Wyoming was the cold spot. Temperature there was 19. In our forecast, and presently, with snow, 33, humidity, 96%, winds from the north, 23, gusting to 33, dew point 32, and pressure rising from 29.79. Tonight, clear is ending and clearing, going down to 20 overnight. Northwest winds still strong, 15 to 25. But tomorrow, sunny to partly sunny, back up above the melting figure, 36 for the high. Northwest winds, 15 to 25. And our Thursday forecast, we do have a chance of flurries with, again, 36, and we'll add one more day here. Friday, cold and dry with temperatures in the low 30s. Thank you, bud. Now we hope you'll stay with us as the Tuesday Five continues as we take you behind the front lines of the Twin Cities Radio War. That story is coming up. Heisenberg Line to the rescue! Midwest winters are tough. They're even tougher on your car. Doesn't your car deserve the utmost protection possible against cold weather freeze-ups? That's why Mills Fleet Farm stocks Durex Antifreeze. Its special silicone silicate formula provides outstanding year-round protection against freeze-ups, overheating, and corrosion. And Durex is available at everyday low, low fleet prices. The more you buy, the more you'll save. Your final cost is just $2.58 per gallon after three or five case mail-in rebates. Doesn't your car deserve the best? Durex Antifreeze, available now at Mills Fleet Farm. What would happen if cats ran the world? People would average 67 naps a day. Chasing balls of yarn would replace baseball as the great American pastime. And people would have to buy their cats Himes cat food, sold only at pet stores. Because the nutrition in Himes makes a healthy difference you can see and your cat can feel. Himes, special pet foods found only at special stores. I know, I know, off the couch. Hi there, glad you're here. This is the eye work, and this is their promise. Glasses fast, glasses bright. Let me show you. First, an exam by a doctor of optometry. Then you pick out frames from thousands. Now here's why they're really fast. They make your glasses in their own lab. <laughs> they can do it in an hour. The price is bright. The eye works. Glasses fast, glasses right. Call for an exam or bring in your prescription. Moby Dick! They all hop into the dinghies in their rope for days, but Moby gets away, then a typhoon hits. The sails get ripped to shreds and they all get wet. Then all the world's fastest mouth paid a quick visit to the Twin Cities today. John Machida, famous for all those television commercials, is now pushing his 10-minute university audio cassette series. If you listen carefully, you would have heard his claim that he can provide a four-year college education in just 10 minutes. His tuition rate is a bargain, just $5.95. Talk is not cheap, especially in local radio. In fact, some of the more successful local radio stations can charge upwards of $400 a minute for a commercial during morning drive time. What a station can charge, though, depends upon its ratings. And in case you haven't noticed already, there is quite a radi radio ratings war being waged by local AM and FM stations. Right, Debbie Ely is here with the story, and she has the details. Don, to hear some people in the industry talk, the ratings war started in 1979. A strike at two radio stations and some major music format changes caused listeners to sample other stations. According to the latest ratings, longtime powerhouse WCCO AM still remains a solid number one in total audience. But the battle for second through sixth place is close, with stations frequently flip-flopping around. Local radio industry experts say that KQRS FM seems to have affected the ratings in the most in the last year. It has drawn listeners away from such stations as WLOL and KDWB, especially listeners in the coveted age bracket. Big uh, advertising demo. Demographic is very important to advertisers. And uh, good naturally, the more listeners you have in that, uh, that age group, 
the more advertising that the, uh, the radio station uh, receives. The loss of one rating point can cost KDWB FM $750,000 a year. This week, the station fired its morning team of Buck and O'Connor and plans to replace them with a new morning team that station managers hope will attract more listeners. As all of these changes take place, we wondered how the morning team at WCCO AM reacted. If we thought about ratings, we'd be out of this business a long time ago because I couldn't take it. But don't let Roger Erickson fool you. The station management is concerned about their numbers, as evidenced by some of their music and even personality changes. Interested, Debbie, in the, in the kind of rates that these people can charge. You say upwards of $400. What's the cheapest minute you can buy in the Twin Cities? Well, we talked to WMIN, which is in Maplewood. That's not one of the, the more dominant stations. It doesn't fall in the top 20. And they charge $14 to $60, $60 in their prime time for a minute spot. But they manage to stay on the air. Mm -hmm. You bet they do. They have a very strong following, they tell us. You know, we hear so much about uh, the ratings war in television, and it seems as if uh, the, the radio stations here are just as competitive, if not more, although we, we perhaps don't hear as, or see or read as much about it in the newspapers. But it really is very highly competitive. You bet. The announcers will tell us that they are not as absorbed as Roger Erickson told us, but management is very concerned about that because when they lose a rating point, uh, it can cost, as we mentioned, $750,000 a we, year. We just heard yesterday about Buck and O'Connor losing mm -hmm. their job. All right, we're going to be back to wrap up the Tuesday Five in just a moment. And the time right now, let's see, is uh, 526. This is going to feel real good. The Home Spa Personal Whirlpool. A powerful head-to-toe water massage that eases tension, soothes sore muscles, and makes you feel real good. Turn your bathtub into a hot tub at a fraction of a hot tub's price. The Home Spa Whirlpool. Everything about it feels real good. You've probably heard about the Wholesale Club, where people who operate restaurants, service stations, stores, and churches buy merchandise at prices below their normal suppliers. Listen to what they have to say about the Wholesale Club. Looks fabulous. We keep coming back because of the prices. Excellent. You can't beat them. Now through December the 24th, come in and rediscover the world of wholesale buying with this free buyer's pass at the Wholesale Club. Where do you think restaurants buy these? Four Twin Cities locations. Ann Robbins is about to get a visit from an old friend, Payne. With age, her minor arthritis has made even simple moves painful ones. That's why her next move is to Metaprin. Metaprin has the same medicine as Motrin, and nothing's proven faster for relief of minor arthritis pain or any kind of pain. Metaprin is also gentler to your stomach than aspirin, so when you haven't got time for the pain, take Metaprin. Nothing's proven faster. Ten little Indians make a big mess. Rental cleaners, that's one way, I guess. But Regina's found an easier way to clean carpets with a hot water spray. The Regina Steamer Carpet Cleaner. High traffic areas? Keep them clean. It's easy when you own a machine. The Regina Steamer Carpet Cleaner. Cleans whole rooms so deep, so fast, makes rental cleaners a thing of the past. For less than you ever thought you'd pay, clean your carpets the easy way. The Regina Steamer Carpet Cleaner. An eight-week campaign to shape up Twin Cities residents came to a close today with ceremonies at Town Square in downtown St. Paul. The Take It Off Twin Cities campaign signed up a total of a thousand people who set fitness goals and then tried to reach them by living right for two months and taking part in some activities and classes sponsored by the health departments and the community education departments of both cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis. A bunch of us from Channel 4 got involved to get the word out in the Take It Off Twin Cities, and I'll be over there today with the uh, superintendent of education for the St. Paul School District, uh, Dr. David Bennett. Talk so to a any of those. A thousand people took off a ton. One <laughs> ton of weight. Is that right? Yeah, that sounds funny when you say it that Did way. they give testimony at all as to how they feel? Does it improve yes, their in fact, outlook? And let, let me tell you one of the interesting things they said, David. When I'm reading some of these cards that the people had sent in, uh, in these education sort of devices, a lot of people took this weight off by learning belly dancing, clogging, square dancing, and things like that. That's what like I've that. got to do. Yeah. Well, what's good for some people? <laughs> One man's meat and other 
bromides. Here's a preview of items coming up on a half hour from now on the 6 p.m. report. The Minnesota State Auditor, Arnie Carlson, has formed a special investigative unit to look into white-collar crime. I'm Pat Kessler. We'll have that story at 6. And Caroline Lowe will report details on a court hearing involving a priest who's accused of sexually abusing a young boy. Tonight at 6. The CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Stock prices fell today in London, Frankfurt, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Singapore, and New York. Concern is growing that President Reagan and the U.S. Congress are dawdling and will come up with too little, too late in cutting the national debt. Ray Brady reports. It wasn't the action on Wall Street today that sent the market spiraling downward again. It was the inaction in Washington. Traders and brokers alike said they were tired of waiting for negotiators in Washington to come up with any budget deficit agreements. What Wall Street wants is an immediate positive, and what the politicians are doing is sort of extending the drama.